Unrest at Red Bull? Once again, Red Bull has won a Formula One race in a dominating fashion. Perez won easily because he was in the lead for almost a whole race, while Verstappen went from 15th to second place. But things don't look as good as we thought they would. Perez seemed upset with how Red Bull had been managing the last few laps. How will this affect them? Could there be some drama? And are we seeing some unrest in Red Bull? Watch the video until the end to find out. Checo has asked the Red Bull team to review their communication strategy after a move at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix that he thinks cost him points. Even though Red Bull said he had the fastest lap, Max was able to take it from him. If he had been able to finish that race with the fastest lap, it would have been the first time in his F1 career that he was P1 in the Drivers' Championship standings. So during the last few laps, Perez was told to keep up his speed when he radioed in that his brake pedal was too long. Around the same time, Verstappen reported that his drive shaft was making noise. Perez had questioned the radio order to keep his lap time, wondering if the same thing had been said to his teammate who was following him. Then Verstappen asked about the fastest lap, but the team said they didn't care about that. Verstappen quickly said, but I am, and on the very last lap he took the fastest lap point away from Perez. This seemed to have annoyed Perez, who explained afterwards that he felt different information had been given to himself and Verstappen, the fastest lap point being the only differentiator between the two Red Bull drivers after the first two races of the championship. I asked two laps from the end when they told me to keep a certain pace, Perez told the media in Saudi Arabia. They told me I had the fastest lap and to keep the pace at a certain pace. I thought the communication was the same to Max. I think we need to review the different information, and I just couldn't push them in the end. While social media naturally focused on Jos Verstappen's petulant reaction as the Mexican celebrated with his team after winning the race, the Dutchman stared straight ahead while the Mexican hugged his crew just inches away. The rest of us listened to the radio messages from the two drivers in the final stages of the race. Verstappen had worked his way up to second place, which he says he would have done even without the safety car. He was getting close to his teammate when he heard a strange sound coming from his car. Since his drive shaft broke during qualifying, just like those of his Ferrari teammates, the Dutchman is worried about how reliable his car is. Even though he was told everything was fine, the two-time world champion wasn't sure. Verstappen worked his way through the field in the early stages of the race. A mid-race safety car intervention made it easier for him to get back on the podium and put him in the running for the win, but Sergio Perez held on to his five-second lead all the way to the finish line. Even though he was happy that Red Bull got 1-2 despite having a bad weekend, Verstappen said he was unhappy that the last two race weekends haven't gone well on his side of the garage. He is leading the championship by one point as the F1 caravan left Saudi Arabia. It's not only about the pace of the car, we need to make sure that we are reliable without any issues, he told media after the race. I mean, my first weekend was not very clean because of the big balance shift from testing to the race weekend and some other things which were going on in the background. Now again, after three positive practice sessions, well, then I had an issue in qualifying. Of course, I recovered to second, which is good. In general, the whole feeling in the team is everyone is happy, but personally, I'm not happy because I'm not here to be second, especially when you are working very hard. Also, back at the factory to make sure that you arrive here in a good state and make sure that everything is spot on. And then you have to do a recovery race, which I like. I mean, I don't mind doing it. When you're fighting for a championship, especially when it looks like it's just between two cars, we have to make sure that all also, the two cars are reliable. In the last 10 laps of the race, something seemed to go wrong with Verstappen's car, which made him nervous. The Dutch driver radioed in that something might be wrong with the car's drivetrain, but the team told him not to worry. But Verstappen's charge seemed to stop because of the unknown. He slowed down a little so he could try to set the fastest lap on the last lap and win. Although the team couldn't figure out what was wrong, Verstappen thought there was something wrong with the car's balance. With only 10 laps left, Verstappen did some math and realized he wouldn't be able to catch up to the leader. He settled for second place to keep his car away from potential problems. He also said that the same thing had happened the day before during qualifying when the car did suffer a problem. Luckily, this didn't happen during the race. Christian Horner's comments were somewhat expected. Speaking about the fact his drivers were pushing in what seemed a hotly contested battle for the win, Horner said he was feeling very nervous about how the closing stages might have played out had Verstappen caught up. Max is a racer. He's going to push, he told Sky F1. Coming from 15th on the grid to second at a street circuit, that's pretty unusual. But I mean, Sergio stepped up to the challenge after that safety car. 
Obviously, my heart was in my mouth at that point, because I was envisaging within three laps having two drivers going at it hammer and tongs. But it didn't materialize. Checo got the gap and was able to manage it, and his pace today was fantastic. Horner revealed that during the final stages of the race, Verstappen had raised concerns about a potential problem with his RB19, leading to a temporary pause in the intense competition as the issue was inspected. The drivers had been giving their all until the team suspected an issue with Max's car. Yet, upon scrutinizing the data, they confirmed that there was no problem, enabling both drivers to resume their full-throttle efforts. Although Max had encountered an obstacle a previous day with a faulty drive shaft, he managed to stage an impressive comeback and advanced through the ranks, ultimately clocking the fastest lap time. Still, even with all of that, could Perez really beat Verstappen? Does he really have what it takes to race faster than Max, a generational talent, in a straight head-to-head -head battle? It's already been done. Nico Rosberg will tell you. The story of how Rosberg beat Lewis Hamilton to win the 2016 championship is as common and instructive as any other story of a regular driver beating a star teammate. No one, not even Rosberg, will try to tell you that Rosberg was faster than Hamilton that year, but he was smarter and maybe even more determined to put himself in a place where he could take advantage of the Britons' mistakes and bad luck. He gave everything he had in an effort that was so hard on him that he quit at the end of the year, sure that he would never be able to focus that hard again. The mental strain was very high because the battle he had with Hamilton, which he won, was fought both on and off the track. During their three years as teammates, which ended in 2016, there was a lot of bad blood inside Mercedes. To try to get rid of the bad air, Toto Wolff had to switch mechanics between cars at random for that season, but the cars still crashed into each other twice. Both of them were accused of breaking team rules about engine modes and strategies, and there were a lot of mind games going on. Both were threatened with being fired after they crashed into each other on the first lap of the 2016 Spanish Grand Prix, which is almost unheard of in Formula One. It's the kind of thing a driver can almost get away with when the team doesn't have any outside enemies to work together against. Instead, the garage's two sides turned against each other. Perez has to decide if he is willing to put everything on the line in an internal war to see if Verstappen will crack. Despite Verstappen's father's reaction after the race, which prompted some fans to say that he is a sore loser, Red Bull remains in a favorable position and is the frontrunner for future victories. Max and Checo are both highly skilled drivers, and it is anticipated that they will discuss and resolve any problems or dilemmas they may have in the coming days. Other drivers on the grid, notably Ferrari and Mercedes, will need to catch up to Red Bull and Aston Martin, who are currently driving without pressure and feeling confident. What do you think? Will this drama have an impact on Red Bull's season? Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below.